we left uh, we left uh, Asheville on the seventh of June, heading for the Isle Iona. So, how many of you have been to Iona? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can entice you. <laughs> well, maybe after we finish this, uh, you will have seen everything you need to see about it. Uh, let's see. Um, what do I have to do with you to make this? Probably just hit the space bar. Well, I want to go backwards. Oh, oh there, there you go. go. All right. Uh, the Island Mall is uh, off the coast of Scotland. Out of curiosity, let's see whether my little point works. Let's see if this shows up. Oh, this is Scotland, <laughs> Seattle Mall, and there is Iona right there. <laughs> it's uh, about three miles long, about a mile and a half wide. Uh, 1,900 acres, um, and it's in the southern part of the Inner Hebrides Islands. Okay, you got this text in your mind as to where we are. Um, our route was from Glasgow. We flew to to uh, ended up in Glasgow. Um, Glasgow. Interesting uh, industrial city. Those, they have a, a, they had a botanical park near where we stayed and that particular tree is called um, a monkey puzzle tree. And it's native of Chile. And it was introduced into the United Kingdom in 1795. <clears throat> so we took a train from Glasgow to Mall, uh, I mean to Oban, which is on the coast. That's the, that's the uh, port right there. And uh, uh, that's Looking back uh, into Oban from from the ferry, that interesting building at the top up there, right here, is a is a monument that uh, a, a banker Flint was built and uh, at the turn of the uh, 20th century to uh, memorialize his family and provide some um, employment for. For miners in the area, uh, he died in 1902, and and uh, <clears throat> although he left some money for this thing to be completed, uh, the family contested the will, and nothing ever happened after that. So <laughs> it's a very big circle inside it. It uh, looks like a coliseum with nothing going on. <laughs> So we, uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, we got to the coast, we took a ferry over to Mull, and then we got on a bus. And uh, this was one of the first signs I saw on the bus. And I'm not quite sure what it, what it means, but the bus ride was really interesting. That's the road. Hmm. You notice there are no middle lines because it's a it's a one lane road, and that this little area right here, if the car was coming in the other direction at you, it would pull over. If that if this little air pullover area was on this side of the road, the bus would pull over. You can't get two two cars along there. And oops. As you can see in that picture, Ooh. not a particularly good picture because it was raining. Um, <clears throat> once we were uh, at uh, the uh, port on at uh, at Mall, 
we were in sight of Iona. That's mm. the land part there. We we're lined up ready to take this ferry across the mall. It's about a mile and it takes 10 minutes. Okay, so the next question I, I thought might be interesting to address is, so what's the draw of Iona? Why do you want to take a train and ferry and a bus and a ferry to get to this place over here? Uh, why are thousands of annual visitors from all over the world attracted to this place? That really isn't easy to get to. There are several factors that, uh, that combine to make Iona a very special place. This little island has some of the most complex geology in the world. The oldest rocks are dated to over 2,000 million years. I think that translates to 2 trillion. And there is a special um, granite that was mined on that island. Um, that's the close of the island, and that was that little bump we saw. This this is an altar in the attic, and it's not a particularly good picture. I, after I got home and started putting the presentation together, I said, I should have taken a better picture of that. But you can <laughs> see that there is a little bit of green in it, and that's a unique kind of, of, a, of a granite, white granite with a green tint to it that's lined there. Uh, with the arrival um, in a rudderless coracle boat, anybody know what a coracle boat looks like? It's, it's, a, it's a wooden frame with a, with a high rudderless. Um, an Irish priest by the name of Columba and 12 of his companions in 563 uh, landed in uh, Iona and, and began the monastery, um, one of the most important influential in the British Isles. Missionaries. Uh, was sent throughout northern Britain and Scotland from Iona. It also became a lead, leading artistic center with sculptors, metal workers, manuscript illuminators flourishing there. The, the iconic Celtic crosses about the landscape. <coughs> And the Book of Celts, which is now resident in Anna, is Greek. It's generally agreed that it was produced on Iona. The community uh, led by Columba on Iona was reflective of the essential features of Celtic spirituality. Throughout its history, themes of community, hospitality, healing, and prayer, worship, scholarship, and an incarnational doctrine of a faith being lived in the world have been both foundational and accessible. Now there are a variety of ways that you can experience um, Iona, depending on your what your personal need and uh, interests are. One can be like a tourist uh, visiting any historical site. As uh, Ronald uh, Ferguson, the leader of the Iona community from 1981 through 1987, notes, some come hoping to recapture the chance of the Benedictine monks or following the, in the footsteps of the likes of Mendelssohn, Wadsworth, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. Others seek the fable beauty of Iona. Some come in search of healing. Still more come drawn by the work of the present-day ecumenical Iona community, which seeks to live the gospel of justice and reconciliation in the world today. Those of us who travel to Iona from, with the Missional Wisdom Foundation define our journey, I think, as a pilgrimage for a spiritual, a spiritual journey. 
Thomas Merton says, spiritual practice is about seeking the experience of presence. Seeking the experience of presence. An existential uh, accessing of something at the heart of life. <coughs> I went. I, Polly and I had been to Iona before. We were there in 2008, just very briefly, one afternoon. We, we managed to drive all the way over there and take the bus and the ferry. And we spent an afternoon there and we realized that there was really something special there. <coughs> this I need to. Okay. Um, so when the opportunity came uh, this past spring to join the Mission of Wisdom Foundation for a longer stay, um, it seemed the right thing to do. Um, I was dealing with uh, an interesting issue that I think probably faces all of us at one time or another. When I turned 80, Death moved from an intellectual understanding to an emotional one. And I was uh, I was spending a lot of time thinking about that, trying to figure out, okay, you know, I have maybe 10 or 15 more years, unless I'm like her and probably live to 150. <laughs> um, what's this what's this final phase in my life look like? How do I how do I move into that with energy and enthusiasm? And I thought some time spent in Iona might be helpful. Our leadership uh, utilized a daily rhythm that encouraged our being open to that something at the heart of life. Uh, those components involve twice daily worship and prayer, discussion, socializing, taking turns, preparing our evening meals, and we had some really good meals, fresh salmon. Um, and a pilgrimage around the aisle, around the, the aisle of Iona that, that Ferguson described in his book as a, com as a combined appreciation of the wonder of creation, stories, history, and faith. So let's take a closer look at Iona. We begin with uh, our accommodations. Uh, originally, uh, this green shed, that's the name of it, the green shed, was originally a hostel, but during the pandemic, it was turned over uh, into an Airbnb. Married couples had separate bedrooms, and the others bumped together in several other rooms. The road from our accommodations um, to the Abbey was about three quarters of a mile one way uh, and another quarter mile to the center of the town. And our walk uh, sometimes was interrupted. That's a, that's a video. Uh, I'm not quite sure I know how to play it on. I don't, I don't think PowerPoint will play it. It does on mine. It, it's playing. It's playing. Ask and you shall receive. Um, the interesting thing was that these sheep were all over that field, and when the uh, the woman and her dog came across the street, they all gathered at the gate. Where are they going? It's uh, it's they're crossing the road. Like, 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 they're, they're following the chicken. <laughs> you watch this, that lamb right there was a little bit interesting. He kept his eye on the dog. <laughs> I pulled this, uh, this picture off the internet. It's not a particularly good one, but um, I wanted to show you that mound because that mound um, is where Columba had his scriptorium where he, where he worked and prayed and spent his last day. Um, I have a picture of it from the other side. 
After his death, a chapel was was built for that one right there. A little bit hard to see. Uh, it was erected over the location where Colombo was initially buried. Of course, the Abbey complex is the focal point on Iona. That's worship inside the Abbey. Um, it was really a special place, and, and the two times a day that we went there were special. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the services we had with a smaller group, that was a Sunday group of Sunday. The, the, uh, during the week, it was a much smaller group, intimate, intimate group. Uh, we spent time in prayer uh, for everybody that was in that room. And everybody, and there was a list of, of uh, members that were throughout, uh, most of the ones, the names that we read were from members that were state for that were residents here in the United States. It was a very powerful service. Um, the Abbey itself was, uh, was initially the work of Benedictine monks who in 12,003 were invited to establish a new Iona community on the site of the Colombian Foundation. Uh, structures prior to that construction of the Abbey were probably uh, what we would call beehives. They're in various parts of the world. That's the basic structure. No. <laughs> That's just a picture, but that's basically what, it, what where they lived and where they worked. They didn't have this cathedral kind of building. Um, today, today's abbey is basically what was built uh, in 1430 and uh, and significantly re renovated beginning in 1938. It's an interesting story about this little cross that's sitting uh, in in the abbey. Uh, when when um, McLeod was in the process of renovating uh, the abbey, he knew that he needed the cross, and so he was looking around. And he happened that he was in Glasgow one day, and he happened to be walking down the street. And he saw that cross sitting in the window of a shop. So he went in and asked the proprietor uh, if, if he could buy that. And she said, I'm sorry, it's not for sale. She said, uh, before my husband died, he said, do not sell that cross. It's, it's to be given to George McLeod. Hmm. <laughs> And there it is. Um, there's a memorial for the Duchess and, and Duke of uh, Argyle. In, uh, in 1899, they owned, they owned the property they, uh, where the Abbey was, and uh, they donated it to uh, the Iona Cathedral Trust. Uh, and he, he died in 1900, so it was pretty close to his death. This is inside the Abbey, and, uh, and we made a comment about, gosh, they stopped growing on the wall. And I said, that, that tells you that the renovation was successful because the building is breathing. <laughs> I'll take their word for it. <laughs> There were a little um, alcoves off the main uh, chancel area uh, where they have prayer um, opportunities. This is a picture of, of the courtyard. Initially, it was just the abbey. And then with the renovation that began in 1938, they started adding on other parts. There's a, there's a cloister. That's on the other, you can see part of that. This part of the, this part of the, is the abbey side, and this is the cloister side, and this 
is a sculpture of some uh, debate uh, that was given, uh, was, was donated to the, uh, to the Abbey, and it's called um, The Descent of the Spirit. And it arrived uh, in Scotland in uh, 1958. That's the oldest building uh, on the island. It's, a, it's a Orange Graveyard Chapel. Um, it dates back to 11, the 1100s. Hundreds. And I took that picture so you can also see part of the, the uh, graveyard. Um, it's believed that 48 Scottish kings, including both, perhaps both Duncan and Macbeth, are buried there. There are eight Norwegian kings, four Irish, and two French monarchs uh, lying in that ancient graveyard. Uh, their, board, their bodies were born along this street that came, that's all that's visible at this point. It's called the Street of the Dead. Uh, Ferguson uh, reports that the kings wanted to be buried there for two reasons. <clears throat> First, when the last trump sounded and the dead rose from their graves to face the judgment, it might be possible to hang on to the coattails of a saint. <laughs> and some of the Scottish kings would need all the help they could get. <laughs> the second, Columba was believed to have pro prophesied that when the world came to an end, uh, the whole world, the whole earth would be covered by water except Iona. So how much better to rise and dry? There's also a, an old Gaelic prophecy to the effect that Christ's, Christ's second coming will take place on Iona. Hmm. About the time that the Benedictines moved in, and um, Augustarian nunnery was built. Attractive ruins. And that helped to add to Iona's reputation as a spiritual center. Now you can walk any place on the island. All areas are open, fenced or not fenced. There are just some rules that you have to follow. Um, you're, you're required to respect the property, uh, close all gates, Cross the fences using the up, you know what an up down is? They're, they're little steps that you, a couple of steps up and they go, you can step over the fence, a couple less rail, and then down the other side. Um, you have to leave nothing behind. So you take everything with you. And that holds for people, but not so much for sheep. <laughs> and there are a lot of sheep. And a few cows. Um, and of course, in every crowd, there were a few black sheep. <laughs> um, one of the excursions that we took, um, oops, what's going on here? Yeah. It should be an X in the upper right hand corner. I don't see the arrow. Well, you click on your presentation, click on the picture. Now you get to find yourself. Yeah. Oops. Okay. So let me, let's uh, get our bearings again. Before we go on. This is the Abbey. This is the town where we landed on the, on the uh, ferry. Um, so, and we were up here. This is where we, uh, where the green shed was. So, we're taking an excursion. We walked down, there's only one main road. And 
Um, there are 100 and, about 170 permanent residents on the island, and they're the only ones that have cars. So you walk everywhere. So we we're going to walk down here um, to this area right in here. What's the, what's the temperature? Uh, at, in the evening, <clears throat> night, it was um, high 40s, and during the daytime, mid to high 50s. That's about year round. Yeah. Uh, and then we had rain just about every day. <laughs> right. Um, on the West Coast. Um, funny. I've, they had a they had a golf tournament at St Andrews after we got back and I was watching this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it is with golf. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this area uh, this this big field is called the Field of Angels. Um, it's really beautiful. And as you get closer to the water, you can see this. that's a splash. The water's being pushed up into this little um, area. It's just, it's just so beautiful. Um, it's even a good place to have lunch. Um, of course, this is also the golf course. <clears throat> And there were the groundskeepers. <laughs> <laughs> so from that field, then we head south down to Columbia Bay. That's the, the trail that we were on. And we're getting closer to the bay. Uh, um, now, this is Ireland. And this is Iona, and so that distance is the, the distance that Columba and his little and his twelve buddies in their little purple boat without a rudder made. Um, you know they stopped along the way. They didn't do it all in one night. <laughs> that's where they ended up. And there's the, and that's the bay. Lots of lots of uh, small stones. Was well, the ocean always rough? Yeah, well, we were there once. So you always had white caps. It's also a good place to just sit and contemplate. Second area that we, we uh, some of us hiked to was this is called Dun Eye. It's a, it's a uh, hill of Iona, Dun Eye. <clears throat> Interesting place. This circle right here uh, was Columbus retreat area. It's it's um, it was probably uh, one of those beehive huts there, and he would. He would ride a pony over there and spend some quiet time away from the, the Abbey area. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> and his uh, the monks would stay up above up, above <coughs> the uh, we're looking down and they're placed at that at that. This area was up, so there was some distance between uh, the uh, the area that Cumbri uh, stayed in and the in the area that uh, um, so the hermit the hermit hermit cell was down below, and then the the hermitage for the rest of the men was up there. This is uh, a video for uh, northeast to southwest, the breadth of the island. 
That's the field that we were down in. Right there. <clears throat> you can't hear it, but um, the wind was fierce. Um, finally, I want to share a, 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 an excursion that was basically the cherry on top of the cake. Six miles northeast of Iona is an uninhabited Scottish island of Staffa, S-T-A-F-F-A. Has anybody heard of Staffa? Takes about an hour by boat and is worth the trip and here's why. That is a uh, 60 million year lava created. That's uh, all uh, basalt. Basalt. Love. <coughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, the giant causeway uh, in the area of Belfast is has the same uh, uh, assault lot of columns. In uh, May, June, and July, the Pelicans uh, are on the island, and there are hundreds of them. And uh, that this this photo was not taken with the zoom lens; it was just at the end of my feet. This one taking off. Now, there are a number of caves on this island. Uh, the most famous is Fingal's Cave. Anybody heard of Fingal's Cave? It's, it's right there. That's Fingal's Cave. And here is the opening, and there is a person going into the cave. And that's you Which walk along the, those uh, lava columns. There's some people. The, the boat that we came to that island on is around the corner. Um, so you can walk along there, have a hand there, which is handy because those stones can be kind of slippery. That's looking out from inside the cave. That's the end of it right there. Now, I don't know quite how to do this because I've got one other slide for you. Since this doesn't have sound, I'm going to try to do it with my phone to my microphone. Let's see if that works. <clears throat> Hang on, I'm having technical difficulties here. Did you silence your phone? I did. Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, following 
uh, Felix Mendelssohn's visit uh, to the cave in 1829, he said, he did not have words, words to describe this natural phenomenon. Instead, he wrote the Hebrides literature. Well, that's all I have, folks. And I'll be happy to entertain any questions. I can't provide promise the answers, but if you have some questions, I'd be happy. Yes, sir. You want to thank you, Doc? Did you service? What type of service was it? Today's denomination? I'm sorry, I was an ecumenical. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, what type of service did you have at, at these chapels? Uh, was it what type of denomination? Was it, it was an ecumenical. It was ecumenical. Yeah. It's Scottish. I mean, <laughs> but they're, they're intentionally ecumenical. So what do they have? A, they have a, a a Presbyterian base. I mean, in Scotland, it's Presbyterian. So some type of minister led the whole service. They had different readers. I mean, there was somebody organizing it. And there was they always had an uh, organ, somebody playing the organ, and uh, um, they were they were simple half hour services. So, yes. Is that water navigable? I don't, I don't have a sense of. Wind. No, that's not navigable. It, it's washing in and washing out. And then, and it's not that wide. And it's probably, I don't know, 15 feet across. How tall, roughly? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know, maybe 20 feet. Hmm. Probably goes back 50 yards. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the group that went from here? Or is there a part two to this? I think you're going to tell us. Oh. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw the county, but how many people went from Central? There were seven of us. Seven. Two Lingles, uh -huh. two Mockeries, uh, Morgan. Morgan, who uh, works at. Um, yeah. Where the, where the original foundation is. Uh, Hall Creek. Hall okay. Creek, right. Yeah. And, uh, and us. And then there were there were nine other folks, one from Seattle and uh, and eight from the Dallas Fort Worth area, which is the home base for the Mission Wisdom Foundation. And and did the Mission Wisdom Foundation also gather and have meetings, or you were pretty much on your own with your? We were all together. Yeah. It was uh, Larry uh, Dugan, who is the of the uh, chair of the Mission Wisdom Foundation. He was there, and his assistant, and then of course, uh, yeah. Annie is part of the Mission Wisdom. So, and they were, you know, as I mentioned, they they had a had an agenda throughout the day that uh, that that <clears throat> replicates, I think, the rhythm that is a part of the Iowan community. So it's. It's worship, it's conversation, study, it's, it's we prepared meals together. We had, each of us was in a team for the meals and uh, we prepared dinner. There were two or three of us in a in team and, and we sent our menu in to, um, to Annie in April. And then they made sure that the food was um, available. Each day, and if you cooked, if we cook tonight, tomorrow we were in Kina. <laughs> Other questions? Did you provide the salmon? Is that your meal? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did cottage pie, <laughs> which is shepherd's pie but made with hamburger. <laughs> yes. I turned 80 two weeks ago. Tell me what's in store. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I came away with. Yeah. I came away with uh, a sense that I was to stay engaged and to drink more scotch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing better on the on the uh, staying engaged part than the scotch. The single malt is still expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not a question, but 
Uh, Iona is a place I'd love to go, and although a month from now we'll be at Scotland, Iona is not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. But the three years that uh, I was the Protestant chaplain <clears throat> at Christmas time on a uh, on Christmas cruise ships, they did not allow us <clears throat> to have candles for the Christmas Eve service. <clears throat> so we found the cloth in the cradle service from the Iona community where we used the whole liturgy, the Presbyterian and Calvinist liturgy, but then in the end, uh, they have Sue come up with a basket, and everybody, when they come into the place where we had the service, they had been given a little strip of muslin, muslin white, and they were invited to come up and lay it in that basket. Mm -hmm. It was a powerful moment. I was a little afraid how it would work, but it was very, very meaningful both to us and to the people that were there. Yeah. So I have a great deal of admiration for the Iowa community, yeah. although I've never been there. Would Holly have you want to ask you one thing? Yes, just one thing. Um, one of the things that was so meaningful to me was uh, the time that we were in the Abbey and the various <laughs> services. Um, one night there was a healing service uh, and they passed, I may not have this all correct, but he'll correct me. Um, uh, they passed a, a basket around to all of us and we took a name out, or two names, I guess. Yes, two names. And those were the ones that we should be praying about during this time of healing. Um, one of mine, of uh, the two that I got, I assumed it was from someone older, the writing was very shaky, and wanted prayers for for healing and calmness as the end time was coming, something like that. And then another one was from someone from Colorado. Uh, it wasn't there in, in presence, but had sent in a request because there are People that have been to Iona or people who have read about Iona who are very much a part of it. And so they sent their prayer request. So I had a woman for, from Colorado who just asked for thoughts and healing. Um, I still have those on my dresser. So that all was really uh, important to me. And as we passed the, something around when it came to me and I held it, um, I very much felt the prayers uh, were going my coming to me. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Because it is Wendy Brown. <laughs> That's our daughter from oh. California. Oh. Oh. Our other daughter from Ohio. Great. And we were glad to have her. Right. Yes. Thanks.